You're listening to 10 Points, a podcast with your hosts, Ash and Nicholas, where all the talk is Canadian Highlander, our favorite format from the best trading card game ever, Magic the Gathering. Hey everyone, it's me, Nicholas. And me, Ash. And today we're going to have a guest join us for a deck tech, so welcome, Seth. Hi. Uh, but first, we need to do our best card from the set, Stronghold. Uh, Seth, do you want to go first or do you want to go last? I'll go first. All right, go for it. My favorite card from Stronghold is Tortured Existence. It's yeah. It's, it's just fun. It's so much value. Too much All value. All the value. <laughs> uh, Nick, you or me? Uh, go for it. Okay, so I I kind of struggled with three different cards here, and frankly, they all are a tie, so I'm just going to roll this d6 and figure out which one I'm going to do. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Sure. All right, it's a one, which means my, my best card from Stronghold for Canadian Highlander is Mana Leak. Um, it's one of those cards that it's just a really solid role player, and it's made its way, it's made, it, made, it makes its way into a lot of control or mid-range decks and I, it, again it's just a role player so if you need that fourth like a third or fourth two mana counter spell you're often going to find yourself on mana leak um the other options i was considering well actually i'll, I'll talk about them after nicholas shares it's just in case he, it's one of his yeah uh i was also stuck between three cards and i'm i, I imagine they're uh, similar three cards um, and I was actually going to choose Mana Leak, but since Ash uh, rolled the die on Mana Leak, I'll, I'll go with Mox Diamond. Um, it just it enables some really explosive starts in certain decks, uh, medium red and medium other color decks. Uh, really like also it. Also great in combo. Yes, very good in Storm, very good in Paradox Academy, uh, very good in Eggs. Um, yeah, Mox Diamond is very, very good in the decks that want it. Okay, so let's let's count down from three and then say our our third card, because that was one of my three cards. You ready? Yep. Okay. All right. Three, three two, two, one. one. Ensnaring bridge. Ensnaring bridge. There it is. All right, we got way off with counting there, but you know, there you go. Uh, they'll fix it in post. <laughs> sure. Sorry, Robert. <laughs> Fun fact: you 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 don't necessarily have to. No, nope, you definitely much. do not. Poor I'm just Robert. realizing my audio is like extremely loud, so I hope this is not like way horrible uh is it worth checking now that we've already broken ah, the, we're the good wall and robert's nah, already gonna have to pull his hair out editing nope. our no 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 up. it's good we're good no it's good this is all staying in okay sure it is all right uh all right <laughs> so uh now we're gonna move on to our main topic today um as as nicholas hinted to we're gonna be doing a deck tech today we haven't done one of these since episode three, which I guess was tw- th- 13 episodes ago, which is insane to think about. That's a lot but, of episodes. I didn't realize you put out so many. <laughs> I know, yeah. This is episode 16, and that was episode three. Yeah, there um, you go. But so today we're going to have Seth join us, and we're really just going to be putting a lot of prompts to him to let him explain uh, all about his deck, which is Green Black The Rock. So uh, I guess I'll just start off with question number one, a little bit more about you than about your deck at first. So first off, how long have you been playing uh, Highlander and what got you into it? Um, I've been playing, I think, like five years, four years, maybe. I'm not completely sure. Uh, my first introduction to it. Yeah, I went with my brother and played his uh, Is It Tempo deck and had no idea how to play. So pretty much still new to Magic. So I struggled a lot. <laughs> and then, like, my first deck was RDW, so it wasn't, like, much different. Pretty brain dead. Your first deck, that was your own? That was my own, yeah. So, uh, interesting you say Highlander was, like, not only your first intro into a big constructed format, but... You, like your first intro into Magic the Gathering as a whole? Pretty much. I played for like six months, maybe a year, just like very infrequently at home with just like random cards from packs I opened. Okay. Um, nothing like serious. Yeah. I, gotcha. I would like to point out it is very rare for a format as complex as Canadian Highlander to be someone's first format or first serious format. So yeah. good job, Seth. Yeah. 
Probably speaking, <laughs> I wouldn't suggest it, but we're happy to have you. I think it worked well for me, though. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely yeah. embraced it. <laughs> So you mentioned that RDW was your first deck. Um, how did you shift to this deck, and what came in between uh, your first deck and your current deck? Uh, so my, yeah, RDW was the first deck. My second deck was Red, White, Death, and Taxes. That was basically just, it, it was more just like Burn with some white taxing cards. It wasn't very good. Um, and then... Eventually, I was just like, I don't want to play aggro. I want to play a more mid-range strategy. And so I just completely shifted out of uh, red and into black-green. But, yeah, that was over a while. It took a while to collect the stuff for black-green rock. Okay. So once you kind of made it over to the rock, uh, you said you were looking to play a more mid-range strategy. Is that what the rock does? Do you want to talk a bit about really the intricacies or the kind of the basics of not the intricacies but the more basics fundamentals of how the deck performs what it does yeah so uh the deck can be built in like a lot of ways i think the best way is a more controlly planeswalker heavy build um the more mid-rangey version is just usually worse than the other mid-range or aggro decks like um you're it's usually just like you're you're just like being slower than any red mid range deck, so there's no point in trying to go faster than them. Um, so I yeah, I think the best version's a slower control version that tries it survives to like turns one through four, controlling the board with some like spot removal and whatnot, and then playing like a stabilizing spell, so like either like a wrath or like a creature like uh, Kalidus, Trader of Get, um, a new one, Shield Dread, the Apocalypse. That's kind of what it wants to do and then after that you just continue to play lands and then eventually play planeswalkers that are also removal to help control the board more in the later game okay so you kind of want your planeswalkers to be pulling double duty as interaction and then a win condition yeah 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 if you look through the list most of the cards in it um like most of the threats also double as removal or um sort of like another purpose it just uh, like either like card selection or if it is just a threat it's a really good threat um so there's like two cards that i see that are like just a threat and nothing else yeah one of those is questing beast and even then that it kind of does other things yeah. like you know it well, that one's like blockers and also is a great it's, blocker it's yeah it's a great stabilizing four drop because you you hit them and then attacking into questing beast sucks Okay, and then, I mean, Tom Rogoy is the other one that's, like, just a threat. But that one is even a pretty good blocker early. It's actually, I noticed, it's actually so good you decided yeah. to play two of them. <laughs> I, I removed it. I'm just one card short now. <laughs> uh, for the audience, uh, when we were pulling up this list before we began, began recording, uh, we noticed the list had two Tom Rogoyfs in it. So there's a card missing, but that should be fixed by the time the episode is posted. Yeah, Yeah, it will be. So, um, okay, yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned that your your play style of the deck, um, or you, th- you think the best build of the deck kind of leads more towards control, and you talked about it a little bit, but what do you think um, is the, the reason to be playing control in green-black um, over, like, more mid-range or playing other colors? Um, so there's, like, a lot, uh, well, playing, I'll, yeah, just to be honest, playing control in black green is not optimal. You should just be playing blue. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, you should be. Um, I don't want to play full tie control though. <laughs> yeah, who would um, ever do that? <laughs> yeah, who would ever do that? Um, I definitely watch the most recent paper right now. Hey, um, Sultai is dope. But yeah, it's just, yeah, if you, you wanting to play control, I think playing blue is probably just better than playing straight up green black, but it does play very differently. I think, um, yeah, it's it's like a lot of when you're trying to do the more mid rangey version, it gets really diluted with cards that are just dead draws later in the game, um, like your mana dorks or ramp, 
Um, so like I don't pl- the only ramp I play is Soul Ring and then technically Death Rite Shaman. Death Rite um, Shaman, the best planeswalker. The best planeswalker, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, by not playing those uh, more mid rangey cards that like uh, like the mana dorks, you get to play uh, a lot of you. It's le- it's more um, consistency with like good removal spells and hand attack. Okay, so you mentioned that uh, when you started building this deck, it took you a while to acquire the cards for it. So I'm guessing that you didn't really start with what you would consider to be the optimal build, even at the time, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so what are... You can either answer this based on a building up your collection standpoint or a metagame standpoint, but what do you think are the biggest changes from your first iteration of black green rock to the one you're currently playing um in the current version uh there is like i said no mana dorks and there is almost none just threats that everything else does something else besides just be a threat that's the biggest difference okay Um, also i'm playing a lot more rats than i did before is that a symptom of being able to move toward the more planeswalker heavy build yeah Okay, so how many wraths are you on? Let's see. I think I, I see four. Damnation, Drag to the Bottom, Gaze of Granite, Languish. Oh, there's definitely more than uh, four. Deluge, Yehenny's Expertise. Deluge, Yehenny's Expertise. And is there any... I mean, Wretched Confluence is not really... Pernicious Deed. Pernicious Deed. Oh, Deed. Okay, we're at seven. Forgot about Deed. Coercive Portal, if everyone's friendly. <laughs> I'm yeah, don't, that is don't all you I, I have gotten a course of portal to wrath <laughs> the board before. It is possible. Uh, I have two, and then uh, it turns out uh, I made the wrong decision. Yeah, I was playing against you when we did that. <laughs> so uh, I was playing against Chad, and he was like, mm, "I think I am fine with blowing with the board," and, and then I uh, died. I remember once a long time ago, I was playing against you, uh, and I was on. What was I on? I don't know. I was on some control deck or something. Uh, and we agreed to wrath the board. <laughs> what a world in which it is that we have to live. That was some English right there. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Um, so, have there <laughs> been any uh, new cards, like recent cards that have come out, um, or at least since you built the deck, that like you think have really improved the deck? Or taking it a notch up. Yeah, so uh, uh, Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. That one's pretty huge because my build is re- has a really greedy mana base, a lot of colorless lands. Um, and then uh, Takanuma Abandoned Mire, Besaju Who Endures, or That Endures, I don't remember. Um, those are pretty big because it makes your. My bill is playing just like a like a utility lands package. It made that package way better. Um, and then uh, more recently, uh, Shield Dread the Apocalypse is just like really, really good. So when you say um, you're playing a utility land package, does that also include uh, Urza Saga? Yes. Okay, so that's another card that's relatively... Oh, that's a, yeah, another one that's right. pretty new. Um, also I checked, it is Besaju who endures, um, <laughs> just cause I, I had to check, uh, and that card's busted by the way. It just is saying. really good. It, <laughs> card's so good. Um, so you kind of talked about you, that, uh, and at the beginning this deck was quite different than it is now, which, I mean, you've been playing this deck for years by itself really with f- yeah few you know few different decks here and there so you have a lot of reps on this deck I, i'm sure you've honed it to a fine edge over the years but i do want to know what 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 are the pet cards do you have any pet cards that are like for sure suboptimal but you just love playing them um i don't i don't know i you know, there's, there's an argument that miri's guile is not optimal i really i like it though. I, I think it's really good in this build so I, I think the card's broadly speaking bad but i think 
you have such an insane number of shuffle effects and you're you're buying back your fetch lands that there's an there's an argument to be made on your list. Yeah. Um I think that's the main one that's like questionable. Oh, never mind. That's being stage is the pet card in here. This probably shouldn't be in here. Oh yeah, there's, there's no, no dark depths, is there? There's no dark depths. It's just that's being stage. Yeah. <laughs> that you one should be. You get their dark depths. That's the that's the real I get exactly. Play. Well, I mean, like... Yeah, they crop rotation for Dark Depths, you crop rotation for your Thespian Stage and make a 2020. I've seen Perfect. you Thespian Stage your Urza Saga. I've seen you take someone else's, um... Not take, but I, I've seen you copy someone else's Wasteland. Uh, and I've seen yeah. you take some pretty interesting stuff with it, so... I mean, aside from that, I, I, I don't see it's... anything that looks like, mm, this is a weird include, you know? Yeah. So like I, don't know. I mean maybe that I see an Erg spawn of Turgon here, but you talked to me about how important that, one, that life gain was. Yeah, the and also like the the card selection is, is pretty relevant and it's a really good blocker. So yeah. but that one's that one's subject to change. It's kinda like a flesh slot in the deck. Okay. I've got an interesting question here, which is not really related to this, but you mentioned copying an Urza saga with Thespian stage. How does that work? Does it have the counter? Because it doesn't enter. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I don't remember. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I think did this? Do we did it break me to this? Does it break? Oh um, no no. Okay, I, I could be wrong. I very much could be wrong. But I think what happens is you add a lore counter. Uh, it's like if you copy it, it just has zero, and then it goes up to one. That's that's on kind of what one. I was thinking, which is kind of interesting. Like that's a cool interaction. But yeah, just. That's uh, yeah, one of those weird things that you don't really think about until you get a busted card and another busted card and uh, <laughs> put them together. Yeah, the, the only I've only done that twice, and both times I had to call a judge because I forgot how the way it worked. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. but you still don't remember. I saw this remember. saga confusing people since it was printed. Yeah, that's. I mean. Yeah, that, that's a that's about right, I suppose. Now I want to look and see if you have any more interesting lands to copy. Uh, Field of the Dead is pretty good. Field of the Dead is pretty good. Yeah, that um, one seems good. Maze of Ith is real good. Um, As someone that's been on the receiving end of Seth assembling two Field of the Deads in like a grindy matchup, <laughs> it's just so utterly demoralizing. Oh, this is something that's occasionally relevant with Espeen Stage. Um, since I am playing a couple blue sources just for Oko, using it to copy my opponent's blue source has been relevant a lot of times to play my Oko. That's actually uh, interesting. Uh, Do you want to yeah, talk about your about uh, your Oko inclusion? Because uh, um, I don't know if people Oko is like the, the best yet. three mana planeswalker <laughs> <laughs> that I can play. Um, well, I mean, the thing so is, you I, can't, but you still do. Well, yeah, I shouldn't. No, well, I, mean, I, I honestly I think, think I it's worth it. Like, I, think I think it's think insane. Oko's good enough that it's just worth yeah. it. it. It's honestly, so here's good the thing: that it's worth like sometimes getting Dude, screwed over. Oko, mana. Oko being in your deck, all like it just makes people scared to besage you. <laughs> yeah, like, it does. Like what? Do you, like you might just have Oko and go get a blue source. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's disgusting. All right. Okay. Well, Oko's just yeah. like too good. On, on to the that's, question that everyone's been waiting to an- hear you answer, though. What's your point spread? Um, it's Soul Ring, Strip Mine, Crop Rotation, Mine Twist. So nine points. Yep, I'm floating one. Have there uh, been any cards that you've con- like any pointed cards that you've been considering adding, or are you pretty happy with the uh, well the current point spread? I am pretty happy with the point spread. GTA when it was one point was like, or has the does the points change happen? Uh, today, yeah, today, today is the point today. Change. Yeah, not to date um, this GTA, recording, but... but now it's been dated. Um, has been there. It's I don't know. People tell me to play it, but I think it's bad in this build. I mean, if you're um, if you're trying to wrath, like it's hard to want to play Damnation and GTA in the same deck. Yeah. Um. I did think about for just like a, a little bit playing Treasure Cruise. Um, <laughs> for but, for someone like, that doesn't want to play Salt Eye Control, you seem to be slowly working your way <laughs> towards Salt Eye Control. 
Well, okay. It's one blue pip. I can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's also not like you're trying to do it on turn two or three. Like, you're, you're trying to do it on turn 12. Exactly. In your deck. Yeah, it. that's one I thought about, but I, I, I decided against that one. Um. <laughs> I, I will say, I would, I would hate to see you fetch out a wider grave and treasure cruise me. <laughs> in a deck I don't like know, this. that sounds pretty great. Maybe I should try it. No, I don't like it. So, uh, Soul Ring, Strip Mine, Crop Rotation, and uh, Twist. Yeah, and I will say the uh, the probably the best pointed card in my deck is Crop Rotation. Really? Um, it is like at first I didn't realize how good it was with this uh, build. But the more I've been playing it, the more I... Like, when I see crop rotation in an opener, there's just so many things I can do with it. It can be how I kill them. It can be how I deal with one of their threats. It could be um, just mana fixing if I need that. Um, it could be graveyard hate getting the Jupa Bog. It just does... Um, or it could go get um, a, a strip mine if they play, like, an Urza Saga or something. It's just, like, so versatile and can do so much. It's definitely my best pointed card. So I'm I'm gonna skip ahead in our list of our list a little bit, um, because I think we're gonna come back to this question. Um, but I want to hear what you think the biggest weakness of your deck is. Um, if my opponent plays a turn one mana crypt, there is no way I will catch up fast enough. Um, and if my opponent is planning to combo me to death and not interact with me, I will lose. <laughs> so if they play a mana crypt or if they don't interact with you, cool. So, yeah, if, like like my worst matchups are like Storm and like Paradox Academy because they just kind of do their own thing and they don't care if I kill any of their stuff. Okay, because you don't pressure them fast enough? Yeah, like all my threats are just a little bit slow because they also do other things than just be threats. All right, so now that kind of leads into my the, the other question that I kind of skipped there, which is are there any cards that – like what kind of effects or what kind of cards – or what kind of redundancy do you want to see come out as new sets are printed to help you kind of shore up those matchups? Um, or do you think it's just not viable for how the matchups are going to work? I don't think it will ever be good. It will ever be good against combo decks like Storm or Paradox Academy. Um, those decks are just they're they're too explosive, and um, there's very few. Sp- that uh, like cards that I'm playing that it's like interaction spells that are relevant to there's, them. I think um, there's definitely been some rec- like recent cards that I'm noticing that are pretty good. Opposition agent is very very good. That's a very good one against combo. Yeah. Um, do you think if they printed um, more hand attack that it would help the deck enough against those decks, or do you think it would just dilute it too much? Um, it would. It it might help. Um. Specifically in a storm matchup like Breach Storm, um, unless they have like just a, like their kid like they just have a tutor in their opener, um, you, whatever you hit isn't relevant because they're going to be able to play it again anyways if they're going to win. Because um, that's just how Breach works. It feels like it's just like um, hand attack is not as good into Breach as it is other or Breach Storm as it is other combo yeah. decks. So are you happy um, to see Breach going up points? Yes. Okay. Because Breach Storm's definitely like my worst matchup. All right. So then, aside um, from the actual combo matchups, are there any other cards you would like to see come out just to improve your deck, like like more efficient, like better Doom Blades or another good thought series? Yeah, more. Yeah, more um, versatile removal spells that are like not super expensive mana wise. That'd be pretty big, so then I don't have to... Cause like, I could just be playing all Maelstrom Pulse, or forms of Maelstrom Pulse as my removal. That would be pretty great. So you want, like, instant speed Maelstrom Pulses? Yeah, that would be that would be pretty amazing. Um, More Damnations, like, just straight up destroy all creatures for four mana. Okay. Um, less because... less uh, flexible ones? Yeah. Or I should say less just, like, unreliable yeah. ones? Yes, exactly. It's just, like... If, I, when I Wrath, I want everything dead. I mean, sometimes, like, playing your Yehenny's expertise with, like, Hoedis in play is, like, pretty good, but that's, like, doesn't happen all the time. 
I'd rather that just be another damnation. Sure, sure, sure. That makes sense. So, um, um, and then, well, I guess for cards, like oh, just yeah. like one or two more effects, like Sylvan Library or Sensei's Divining Comp, and then one more like at the beginning of your upkeep draw a card effect. Okay, so just more engines. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you talked about some of the matchups that you are less favored in. What matchups do you think that you're more favored in? Um, most mid range matchups I feel pretty good about. Um, and same for most aggro matchups. Control, um, is pretty fifty fifty, in my opinion. It depends on the build of control, but um, yeah, most most aggro. If they're not playing Mana Crypt or Soul Ring on one, I feel pretty comfortable with. And then most mid-range decks. Um, but if they're like playing um, like uh, the Matt's like Naya deck, that one, it, 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 it's a sucky matchup because it just natural orders into like prime time. And that's, I can't deal with that on turn three. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, what it, Tempo is probably a bad matchup. I haven't played that much against Tempo. Um, I think. What am I missing? Any archetype? Not really. What um, do you think about your? Not in broad strokes. I, I I know you said you don't usually like the combo matchups. Do you think that you're more favored in like the creature combo against the creature combo decks, or do you think that they're resilient enough I... to? work through your removal um uh, i'll be honest i have not played against kiki pod in a long time or um yeah i just haven't um like not on this build that i'm on now so i really don't know how that matchup goes i think it's probably um either uh even or slightly not in my favor that would make sense well, the good news for you is that now that Pod is going down to one, I will be playing more Kiki Pod in the near future. So, you'll get Ooh. some now ability get to then... play tests. Um, <laughs> and then I think the the Pattern Rector deck is kind of bad. Um, the the deck bad. is bad, or your matchup is bad. No, the deck is bad. <laughs> so my matchup, I think, is good on that. Deck. Right, hot takes here. Valid. Um, um yeah. oh sorry, Jeff Mark to say about that? No, I just don't think that's a good deck, that's all. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I <sighs> go watch the most recent Paperlander. Oh, did you play it? Did you did one of you guys play it? I did. <laughs> did you win? And you know what? Well, no spoilers. Go yeah, watch it. Go watch it. Okay. It'll it'll it should be out by the time this is this is out. Um so what do you think? Uh, you kind of shared your bad matchups and your weaknesses, and you kind of talked about your good matchups. But what do you think the de- like the uh, at a basic level the deck's best strengths is? What does it excel at? Um, it's really good at making games go long. Um, very good in the late game. Uh, and is pretty decent at surviving. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, there's like like I said before, it's. Probably just a worse control deck than you could play if you were playing blue. So there's not like that much of a selling point to it. But I mean, it definitely has more things that kill your opponent than control does. That's true. Not by too much, though. Well, actually, probably by a lot. Control doesn't do many of those. Yeah. So we have one more prompt here, and then um, that Nicholas will, will ask you. But then we have a good a good amount of time, I think. So I think uh, there's a bit of a side quest i want to dive into about your deck okay um yeah but the the last uh question that we have for you is what's an example of a change that you made to your deck that uh, doesn't seem normal but you have a good reason for it um not playing mana dorks in a green deck that seems to be like the main thing people are like that's a little weird um I think it's uh I think I talked about it already, but it's you get more consistency in your draws later in the game. So usually most of your draws are gonna be relevant. Um even if it's a land because like Field of the Dead is there. Um <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the, the main one. Um I I think it's just better without playing all the mana dorks. 
Seems reasonable. Okay. So, um, like I said, we have a, we, we kind of went through those prompts a little quicker than expected, which opens me up to the thing we had to cut from the script. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, what I want to hear is a little bit more in depth about uh, your matchups against different archetypes. So, okay. how do you, how, how's the way you normally are going to play out a match against a standard control deck, whether it's like blue white or maybe a soul type control deck, a uh, more like hard control deck? Hard control? Like a blue okay. hard control deck. Yeah. Uh, in the opener, um, I'm just, just going to start from like the beginning of the yeah, game. Yeah, go for um, it. Uh, I look for... Uh, well, like, there's like... It's obviously going fast is, is relevant. So if there's a soul ring or a death right shaman, it's usually pretty good. Um, card selection is more relevant against... Um, control so if i see like a top mirrors guile or sylvan library that's pretty great um any of my land tutors that's pretty good um just the and then like as little rats as possible in the opener um you don't want to be seeing your rats those are bad in that matchup what about spot removal does it kind of depend on what um kind? most of the spot removal is pretty versatile in my deck um, but if I see, like, a Heartless act, that's, like, pretty bad. Um, yeah, that, yeah, yes. Opposition Agent is really good against Control, because if you get one of their fetch lands, you're just, you're doing great. Or if you just play it as a 3-2 that they have to use a removal spell on, and then you play, like, an actually relevant creature, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, so that's, that's what I look for in the opener. Usually, um, in that matchup, I will use my Wastelands and Strip Mines immediately because it's uh, pretty bad for blue base control decks to miss their land drops um, or not have as many lands as you do. And I, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but... No, it does. Um, and then just, like, uh, letting my things die is, like, fine. Because your things are also going to die, typically, that you play to kill me. Or just, like, engine cards. Because I we're both usually sitting with so much removal. Um, it doesn't really matter if my things die, because yours are also dying. Um, okay, so not fighting and, over your stuff as much? Yeah, just, like... Or, like, just playing it into a counter spell is just whatever. Because it's not like you're killing me anytime soon. I'm not in a rush to win. Um, and if eventually, like, some of the... Like, it gets, like, blue-white specifically. Um, Which we've played a lot of. Planes, we've played a lot of, yeah. If you land a Planeswalker, that's usually your, you're doing pretty good. And then uh, blue base control in general, I think, struggles dealing with land. So, like, Urza Saga and Field of the Dead are pretty good ways to kill your opponent. Um, yeah, just, like, you, you don't, yeah, in that matchup, you don't really care if your stuff gets countered or dies. Um, you just want to keep playing it. All right, all right. Now, what about um, let's say like a medium red, like a a a deck that's trying to crypt you. Yeah. Uh. So that depends if you're on the play or draw. Um. If you're on the play, you really, really want to see your thought seize or your duress or your inquisition. Um. If you're on the draw, it's still nice to see those, just not as nice because if they're gonna play ramp, they're gonna play it on their first turn. Um, so that's like in the opener it's pretty big um, and then you want to see all your your removal pretty much um, all your efficient removal then a wrath and then usually some six drop you, you well I guess you don't really want to see that in your opener but you do want to draw into it so you can actually kill them once you cleared the board because um, that, that matchup you you want to kill them as fast as you can because their draws are just so good. Like, every card in the deck is a really good threat. Um, okay, so you just want to give them less time to draw the threats? Yeah. Because you're going to run out of removal eventually, and they're they're, they're probably not going to ever run out of threats because every draw is usually a threat. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, what other... Nick, what other archetypes? Uh, you talked about combo, but... Even you said it's not a great matchup, but when you are against combo, what kind of cards are you looking for? 
uh, yeah, hand attack, um, ramp, and uh, depends on the combo deck, but usually you don't want to see much of your removal. Um, even then, it's still fine. Like, getting a random whatever, like, I guess, like, Storm, getting their, like, uh, what is it, the, the, the hybrid green-red, you can sack it to make a mana. Um, Wild Canter? Yeah. yeah, like, killing that is fine. It's not like you're spending the removal on anything else. If you're not doing anything else, obviously. Um, so and then what about, seeing, um... Sorry, I didn't... I, th- I thought you were going to keep going. And then, yeah, just seeing your threats. Because <laughs> there's so few of them. So... Uh, it, your efficient threats, yeah. I'm assuming you also like to see, like, the opposition agent, obviously, but do you also yeah. look for... Um, are there any lands you care about or, like, other creatures that happen to be good against them in addition to being threats? That would be Voidwalker. A pretty huge one. Oh yeah, that makes uh, sense. Then I uh, guess Scavenging it, is too. Scavenging is is pretty good. Death Right Shaman's pretty good. I'm sure, eliminate um, for Besage you at a uh, ideal opportune time could be very good. A what for Crop rotation. Oh. No, that doesn't work. If you could, you could expedition. Oh no, no, no! Sorry, Bajuka bug. Oh yeah, Crop- yeah, but I've done that before. It's very good. Um, wait, you no, know, you um, did that against me before. Yeah, I do it all the time. It's so good against that's that's oh, in the control matchup. I just thought about that. Um, killing their graveyard is more relevant than you think. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's true. Um, control usually likes to it uses it a little more softly than some other decks, but like. But once they start really, using it, it's usually they're abusing like, it. Yeah. I noticed that you're playing Golgari Charm. Um, is part of the reason to beat the Underworld Breach Storm decks to hit the uh, Underworld Breach? Or is it mostly just for um, the all creatures get minus one, minus one, and regenerate claws? Uh, it's mostly the all creatures get minus one, minus one. Because, um, if that, I mean, if, if you have it early, getting like one or two of their dorps with it is good. Um, it randomly gets, yeah, like, Breach, Survival of the Fittest, um, uh, Shark Typhoon, uh, Underworld, or I said Underworld Breach already, Humility, if the Humility is killing you for some reason. Um, I do like to kill a good Humility. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the enchantment thing is just, like, kind of meh. It, it's nice when it's, it's good when it's good, but most of the time it's not something you're trying to do. Is it one of those things where, like, each individual mode on this card is, like, mad, but based on the way Having them all on it one up, card. Well, is it one of those yeah. things where, like, every matchup you're against, one of these is going to be relevant? Yeah. Okay. I mean, unless you're against a Wrath of God, I guess. Yeah, then it's, it's usually not too good. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so... Uh, let's see where... So what about the mid range? Like, if you're going into just like a mid range game where you're not expecting to go against a really like blitzy style mid range, it's more of a like every you know like a standard Jun list or yeah, maybe like a Jeskai um, guy mid range kind of deck. You want to see like your your engine, like your card draw engines, because you're probably gonna go late or go the late. The game's gonna go pretty long usually. Um. It's, yeah, it's, I feel like this deck is very good against mid-range, so most of your hands are fine, um, and there's not usually anything in particular you're looking for, I don't think, at least. Um, okay, they just have, like, enough different things to your stuff lines up with it? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, my last question, which I kind of thought of <laughs> earlier when you mentioned it, is, would you mind kind of skimming through the i think we already did a little bit but kind of skimming through your utility lands just kind yeah, of maybe I, I gotta look at my list for this talk about them. also i noticed you're on 40 lands that's a pretty good number of lands oh it says i'm playing a control deck i also have to be hitting my land drops every turn yeah, and you don't have the cantrips that blue decks get to replace their lands with it, exactly yeah okay um so yeah, I, so I noticed this, like Besaju and Bajukabog, we already talked about those. Field of the Dead, yeah, obviously. Those are pretty good. Fabled Passage is a bit of a surprising one. Is that just for the Field of the Dead, basically? Like you want more fe- Yeah, like you want more fetches because you have the um Field of the Dead going on. 
Um, to be honest, I haven't actually ever thought about not playing Fabled Passage. It's just like I'm on. I like I. It's very rare that I'm gonna have to play it, and it's gonna enter tapped. Um, but I am on six basics, so okay. it is a little risky. Um, but my whole mana base is a little risky. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> even if, if I don't have any basics left, I do have Urborg and Yabamaya, so like it could tap for mana. Who knows? Sure. Yeah, that's true. Um, Krakus, obviously, that one's a standard. Krakus is really good. Strip Mine Wasteland. I'm on. I low. love Maze of um, I I really enjoy yeah. getting to play Maze of Ith in any deck that I can fit it into. I do want to yeah. share that I actually fully hate the fact that you're playing Basaju and Life from the Loam. Uh, it's, it's good. good. Uh, yeah, I know. I believe <laughs> um, it. Yeah. Let's see. What other? That's being Seijo. We talked about that. T- Takanuma gets all, all, any of your Planeswalkers back, right? Yeah, Takanuma and Loam is pretty gross <laughs> later in the game. You just okay. never run out of threats. Or is this not exactly. it? Now, do you think part of the reason you get to get away with playing two blue sources, because you have a Zagroth Triumph and a Watery Grave, playing those are your only blue sources to get Oko on play, do you think part of the reason you get to get away with that is on top of your fetch lands, you have so much uh, land tutoring effects that if you need yeah, it, you and can also, just get it? It's like most games, um, you're fetching for a top land on one. So it's not even like that big of a. So you can just grab the Zagos Triumph. Yeah, Zagos Triumph. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, like, oh. ideally, the Watery Grave would be an underground sea, and either would be a tropical island in here. Um, yeah. <laughs> for, no, for uh, sure. <laughs> I, I do notice you actually Eventually. have an Ashiok Dream Render. I didn't realize that, but that's another one of your cards is pretty good against combo. Oh, it's yeah. very good against combo. Also, it, if you blue, play that you on Sultai. It does make me more full time. Well, um, that is like the only card that I can play against Storm where it, that it will make them. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I mean, yeah, I guess if you just exile the right thing or they just don't have a way to deal with it. Well, yeah, at least like uh, the person who plays Breach Storm in our meta, he, his build doesn't have any interaction, really. It's all in. Yo, he's, he's not even on the freaking Chain of Vapor? I don't think I don't, he might be he on plays Bolt. Vapor. I'm not sure. I haven't. I, okay, I, have no I guess idea. I guess there's Bolt, Bolt and push, um, which that's pretty standard. But, yeah. But then it just t- gets yeah. Takanuma back. Yeah. Or Eternal Witness yeah, back. Uh, it does. I I do have Eternal one more question. Uh, I don't mean to uh, make you lose the rest of your games of Magic since everyone knows your secrets, but how would you say the best way to beat Green Black Rock is? Um, going really fast, <laughs> and, um, playing around the rats, that's a big thing. Um, if you're just, like, like, obviously, since I do have a lot of reps on the deck, I have, like, a decent sense of when to play the rat. Um, but if there's, if you can play around it at all, like, even if it's just holding, like, a single mediocre threat in your hand, that's pretty good. Um... <laughs> And then, uh, uh, I don't know if it's, like, correct. It depends on what Planeswalkers are out. But just hitting me instead of my Planeswalkers sometimes is good. Because some of my Planeswalkers don't do much when they uptake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at you, Vraska the Unseen. Yeah. Uh, Vraska, Avnix, Liz, neither does do much when they no, uptake. You should I mean, always card attack Vraska, no matter what. Always attack the Vraska. Um, do you have I don't any... know. I have not put that much thought into how to beat my deck. I guess that's fair. Do you have any? Do you have any value, like random value things with Grist? Uh, yeah. Uh, the fact reanimating it. Oh, re- you on reanimate? Oh, uh, I'm yeah. on reanimate. Uh, Liliana Death's Majesty brings it back. It's pretty silly. Uh, and it brings it back as a zombie, so it's another card type to it. Um. Wait, hold on. Is it a... Wait. That creature is a black zombie. Just... Okay, so it's not a creature, though. It's not a creature, but it's a zombie, I think. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, yeah, Gris uh, looks like a fun. zombie. 
Well, no, that, no. Okay, the art for Grist is a bunch of bugs on a skeleton. The Grist is the army of bugs. Okay, but, but it also looks like a zombie. No, it's a zombie. <laughs> the no, the army of a... bugs looks like a zombie. Okay. Uh, no. The... Okay. Never mind. Never mind. I can't, um, I can't deal with you guys. If I bake a cake, yeah, it looks the, like a zombie. You're not gonna say you bake, okay, it doesn't look no, like a zombie. I don't even finish that thought. <laughs> what? I, All right. Oh uh, welcome to Nicholas's baking show, where we make zombie cakes. Um, um, not getting forced with negated is pretty silly. Um, I, I oh, love yeah, it. Yeah, that yeah. That's great. That. I, I'm. It's no okay. The worst thing I've I've complained about this. At least twice on the show, I'm pretty sure. But I played against you, like, really shortly after this set came out. I was playing blue-white, and I had my hand. I was, like, looking at negate swords of plowshares, like, oh, there's nothing he can do. Like, it doesn't matter what he plays, I'm going to deal with it. And you're like, Gris, and I'm like, negate. And you're like, no. And I'm like, oh, right. So- <laughs> ah! <laughs> it was the worst day of my life. Grist is whack. <laughs> okay, it's, it's well, great. um, I think that's all the questions we've got for you. Do you have any anything else you want to share about your deck that we didn't directly ask about? Um, yes. If you're building this deck, if you want to build this deck, I would not recommend copying my list. Um, just with how this like deck works, um, I think it's best if you do like a like not. Kind of because I feel like my list is pretty extreme in how it's built. Like there's a lot of kind of extreme decisions I get. Do you think it's um, built like that extreme way because of the meta game in which it exists? Because of the meta game and how I want to play the deck. Um, because like I mean, you can you could definitely build this and it'd be just as viable with uh, like build it in other ways and it'd be viable. Um, like. I don't know. With just how mid range is in general, I think you should uh, build like a kind of generic version of it, and then figure out how you want to play the deck. Oh, uh, so kind of grow into your own list, basically. Yeah. So now that's if they're trying to play the mid range version, but you consider this to be kind of a hard. Or if you wanted to do list, the right? control version, you could just jump right into it. But okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think with like, uh, this. Like, just, yeah, like, mid-range or control decks, you kind of build a basic version of it and then go from there. But I don't know if that's, like, the best way to do it. That's how I did it, and I'm glad I did it that way. All right. Well, I think we now, uh, now we're going to be moving on to our closing segment here. So, Nick, you want to tell me what... Also, wait, Seth, do you have something, like, a story of what you played this last week? Or your last performance? Um, I didn't go last week. I don't remember what I did the week before. All right. I have no idea. He probably 3 0 He probably 3 0 6 would All right. Definitely. <laughs> it happens all the time. <laughs> Nick, do you want to talk about what you played? Yeah. Um, so this is actually from a few weeks ago, but, um, I was playing an Esper control list, uh, just for fun. Um, Match one. Just for fun. Just for fun. Uh, match one, game one, I was able to win the game um, by top decking a well timed Wrath and then landing a Shorikai and just going from there. Uh, game two, I just got creatured to death. Uh, I just got attacked until I stopped breathing. And then I got I lost game three um, because I was already slightly mana screwed, but I was keeping up. Uh, and then he cast a Bloodbraid Elf, uh, and then Bloodbraid Elfed into Life in the Loam with a Wasteland in his graveyard. And then I was That's very mana screwed. Uh, and so I died. Um, and then match two, I was against lands. Um, game one, I was missing land drops, but I did have a Soul Ring. So I was on five mana, but I could not draw another land. But he played a Crucible of Worlds, and I had a Worldly Tutor in hand, so I Worldly Tutored for Fractured Identity, which, uh, may I say, is a hot card. Um, I like that card a lot. 
and I fractured identity, the Crucible of Worlds, which took him off of Crucible and enabled me to start hitting my land drops because I had a fetch land in my bin. Um, and then I just won from there. And then game two, uh, I felt kind of bad. Um, so I mystical tutored for Terminus on turn two after he had four creatures on the battlefield on turn two, including an Arbor Elf. I think he went like land, Deathrite Shaman into turn two Arbor Elf to drop creature. And I was like, all right, I'll, uh, mystical tutor for Terminus and four for one you. Um, and yeah, that's how that went. Uh, and then I think I dropped after that because I had to get up really early the next day for work, but still got some good magic in. All right. Um, yes. Did you mean to say a mystical tutor and not worldly tutor for the fractured yes, identity? Yes, mystical tutor. Whoops. Okay. I was just like confused. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> That's not <laughs> how that works. so good. You can yeah. anything. Thanks for the race for correcting me. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I uh, recently played Bant ETB, which is not a deck that I play all that often, but I did play it pretty recently. Um, the reason I did so is I had a I had a lot of people, well, they really had one specific person from the Discord suggesting that i try out the initiative cards from uh commander legends 2 baldur's gate so i i did that um i can only find two of the cards the white three drop and the green four drop but and i also played the blue four drop common because i was i think i can another one and uh, they ended up being pretty good granted it was in a deck where i got to keep blinking them which definitely helped but uh, it was really good so, um, round one, I am up against Grant on his, uh, black red, it's like black red mayhem devil. It's a sacrifice deck. It's like aristocrats adjacent. Um, and we end up going to time and, uh, I win the match one Oh one in time as, uh, as we draw game two, uh, I tried to kill him, but he just kept, like, having blockers that he sacrificed for value after blocking. And it sucked. But I got there eventually. Um, And then round two, I'm playing up against somebody who is playing um, blue-red, sorry, blue-white tempo. And that's all well and good. Uh, I end up being pretty close to... I mean, I, end, I get two owed, but game two, I end up being pretty close to kind of turning the corner and stabilizing really, really well, putting myself in a really good position. Um, but then he time walked me and killed me. And then I died. So time walk to 10. That's all I'm saying. Please right don't. Now. Yeah, time walk to 10. Let's do it. Woo! Let's start. Woo! On, let's get it trending on Twitter. Um, yeah. And then I can't remember who or what I played against round three. I just remember that it was a moderately long grindy match. Um, but uh, I ended up winning it. Uh, I believe mostly on the back of the initiative mechanic. And then I, uh, that ended up uh, me at two, one and the initiative cards were pretty good. Um, I don't know. I mean, I got to try the other ones. But like, maybe I'm not playing them right. But it just didn't feel as busted as they were insinuate the the friends in the Discord were insinuating they were. But it could just be a meta thing. It could just be the low sample size I had. But even when I was flickering them, it just didn't seem as busted as I was expecting it to be. But uh, they were definitely good, and I would suggest playing them in the banned ETB deck. I don't know about other decks, but for sure in that one. So, yeah. That's what I did. Seems pretty solid. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I think I need to play some blue white soon. I haven't played blue white in a little while. I think we should play blue white soon. Play our rock versus blue white matchup. It's very fun. Uh, I was gonna say you're gonna play blue white with me. <laughs> Ash needs to get his. Uh, fix uh, I'll, blue I'll, white. I'll 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 build blue white with my massive blue and white card collection yes you do have a huge blue and white card collection it starts and ends with 
or uh, or Oko. Yep. <laughs> uh, you, you got Ashiok Dream Render. You can shoehorn yeah. that in there. That's true. Yeah. And then there, um, you know, that's it. Kitchen Finks, that's a white card. I could play that. Ooh, that's true. You can. I wouldn't suggest it, but you're legally allowed to. Wait, I don't see Kitchen Finks in your list. Is that the card that's missing? Oh, that must be the card that's there missing. There you go. We figured it out. Okay, cut Frog the second Tarmogoyf right. and put it in a Kitchen Finks. We did it. Fantastic. Okay. Well, Seems uh, like a does anyone good have any to end on what? solving the mystery? Yeah, <laughs> we solved the mystery. Solved All right, does anyone have any closing comments? Yeah, um, if you want to ask a question that didn't get answered, I am on the ten, ten points podcast Discord. You can just add me, and I'll probably answer it. Yeah, I believe it's at Seth. It is at Seth. Which all, I don't, all I don't, lowercase. I'm not even sure how you manage that, but <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> like uh, yeah uh, it works for me I, there you, know, you go it works and if you're me. not yeah, in the uh, 10 points podcast discord you should get in the 10 points podcast discord say that five times fast and then ask uh, me questions yeah, it's in the description yes um also in the description actually is a link to our pretty recently opened patreon so if you want to support us on patreon you can do that we're not going to sit here and yeah, you know, beg for Patreon supporters every episode, but I wanted to let you guys know that it's there. So, uh, yeah. Bye. See ya. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the 10 Points Podcast, and don't forget to count your points. I seem to have stopped hearing you, so I'm going to assume that everyone is still alive, yes? Uh, I have also stopped hearing Seth, so... Seth, come back. Come back to us. All right, well, while Seth is gone, we will entertain you by uh, naming our favorite card in his deck. I have to pick one. <laughs> is that what we're doing till Seth comes back? That's what we're doing till Seth comes back. Um, My favorite card is the Treasure Cruise that's not there. Uh, My favorite card is the Oko that is there. Okay, I actually do quite like the um the Kalitas. Hey, oh. he's back.